Hello, welcome to a chalk and talk on respiration. This video is going to follow the process of converting chemical energy in glucose to chemical energy in ATPs. And it's going to talk about the first stage of respiration, so just glycolysis. So we start with glucose. Glucose has six carbons, so we can give it a generic term of hexose. We do that because glucose is made into isomers, um, for example fructose and further down there are other isomers and we don't need to learn all those names so we'll just call it hexose because there's six carbons. So the first stage is by using an ATP molecule we take a phosphate and we add it onto the hexose to make hexose phosphate. Hexose phosphate is further phosphorylated to form hexose bisphosphate and as you can see that's six carbons with two phosphates. There is then a hydrolysis step when the six carbons are split into two threes. We call them triose phosphate because they have three carbons each. The triose phosphate is then converted into pyruvate in several stages. One of those stages is the use of an inorganic phosphate to make a triose diphosphate. Those phosphates are then removed and ATP is formed. If you're taking a phosphate off a molecule in metabolism within a cell, the most useful thing you can do with that phosphate is to put it onto ADP to make ATP because ATP is such a useful molecule. So in this process two ATP molecules are used and four ATP molecules are created so there's a net gain of two ATPs. What you need to learn is the material on the left hand side of the diagram. There is additional material on the right hand side of the diagram to help you explain what's going on. Don't forget the two stages in glycolysis are phosphorylation initially. The phosphorylation allows the lysis reaction to happen at a low enough energy level. Then oxidation. From glucose we produce two pyruvate molecules. We also have a net production of two ATP and a net production of two NADH plus H plus from NAD. What happens to the pyruvate after this depends on whether there's enough oxygen in the cell for oxidative phosphorylation. If there is a plentiful supply of oxygen, the pyruvate is moved into mitochondria and the link reaction and then the Krebs cycle are carried out. If there is insufficient oxygen, then we get anaerobic respiration where the pyruvate is converted to lactate. Both of those processes, Krebs cycle and an anaerobic respiration, are discussed in more detail in the following videos.